Hey guys, so today I would like to talk to you about a browser plugin that might just one day save your bacon. It's called NoScript and it's available from noscript.net and I will of course put all the relevant links in the description below. It's available for Firefox and a few other browsers but most notably not available for Google Chrome and I'll talk a little bit about that later. So what does NoScript do and why is it important? Why am I recommending it to you today? Well, NoScript is a pretty straightforward browser plugin. It stops JavaScript and many other plugins from running on websites that you visit by default. It gives you the option to whitelist sites that you visit regularly or websites that you trust so that you can run JavaScript, JavaScript and plugins on those particular websites. But when you're visiting websites that you don't frequent very often or don't trust, then you can decide to keep them at a safe distance by not allowing them to execute JavaScripts when you visit their website. JavaScripts do any number of things, but they largely operate behind the website, out, out of sight. Uh, most of the time they're used for tracking uh, what websites you visit, how long you're on a website, what you do on that website. Uh, Google Analytics, for example, uses JavaScript to track your every movement across the internet. But they can also be used for some more malicious things. They can be used for phishing and scams. And they also uh, are, they can slow down how fast you are able to view the internet. They can actually take up a surprisingly large amount of bandwidth. And even if you do have a pretty speedy connection, it can often uh, run processes which are somewhat inefficient or badly written. Um, that can actually just slow down your browsing experience anyway. Um, there are numerous reasons why um, you would want to keep JavaScript at a safe distance, particularly on websites that you're not very familiar with. It's just basically the online version of better safe than sorry. And JavaScripts, again, they can do a lot of things that we're not aware of. They can do a lot of malicious things. They can do a lot of things that we possibly wouldn't consent to. They can give a lot of our information away to people that we might not necessarily want to hand that information over to. Um, and also, of course, they can slow down your browsing experience quite a lot. So it makes sense for you to be in full control over what JavaScripts run when and where you are on the internet. So I have no script, of course, and I uh, whitelist a lot of the websites that I frequent regularly. I whitelist, for example, YouTube, Tumblr, Twitter, any website that involves me logging on because that those websites usually uh, involve uh, JavaScript. Um, I have it on things like Amazon. I have it on eBay. But I have it turned off by default when I'm visiting any website that I well, haven't visited before or don't visit regularly or don't have a uh, registered account with. So for me, NoScript allows me to practice privacy, but most importantly, safety online. It's probably one of the most defensive measures you can have against malicious code that you'll stumble across on the internet, and there is a significant amount of it. So... Uh, the interesting part about this is that it's not actually available for Google Chrome, and I only found this out from doing research for this video, because apparently Google Chrome doesn't allow a plugin to have that amount of control over the browser, which to me is a little bit suspicious, and I guess it's one more reason to not use Google Chrome. I used to be a big fan of using the Google Chrome browser, but now that I've seen that it actually restricts how you use the internet quite a lot, Firefox seems to be a choice that offers me a lot more freedom, and in this particular particular instance a lot more safety as well. And you know it's particularly good because it's part of the Tor browser bundle and those of you who know what that is will know that it means that no script is particularly trustworthy or at least somewhat com competent in what it aims to do. It's also open source and to be honest when it comes to taking security measures uh, against malicious code out there on the internet I tend to really only trust open source because if you're not um, working with an open source project you then only have the company or the organization's word that what they're uh, offering you is safe. If you can't verify the code or if someone or if a third party can't verify the code, then yeah, you only have that uh, organization's word that their code is safe. And that's one of the benefits of open source is that it allows a greater transparency of how your software is put together. And when it comes to talking about privacy and safety, that's well to me particularly important. So, like I said, all the important links are down in the description below. Feel free to give it a whirl. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now. 
So this is just the end slate, just to let you guys know uh, what other kind of projects I'm working on. For those of you that don't know, I have a, a second channel where I do more informal, casual type stuff. And I also have a gaming channel. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to check those out. Also, if you want to ask me any questions or just have a chat about whatever it is that I've been talking about in this video, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Tumblr as well. I spend a fair amount of time on them. Toodaloo.